We've been baking biscuits. Oh, I got them off the hot bottom heat. And so there they are. Now we're not being purists today. Normally we would make homemade biscuits, but because we're only have a little bit of our equipment, we just decided to use canned biscuits just to show people how it looked. No stick. You're good. I know, you don't like being on camera. But you're the reason that all this happens. That's the muscle behind it all. Everybody was inside. We baked some biscuits in the Dutch oven. Wait, baby. In this Dutch oven. This is his bread piece. And nothing gets cooked in there but bread. And in a little while, we're going to cook cornbread in this one. And because unless he messes up with the, the heat, it never sticks. It is, it's like Teflon, it never sticks. And now in this one, you can lift the lid on this. And this this one. We're making Huff and John in this. This is, you know what Huff and John is? And we've not added everything to it yet, but anyway, we're in the process with this. And in a little while, in an hour or so, when it's done, y'all can come back and get some samples of that and some cornbread. Right. So, but this is what we're doing. So you how can, long would it take to do? Probably an hour. And the you wind, can... The wind hurts. The wind is not your friend. When you're Dutch oven cooking, open fire cooking, the wind is not your friend. It's your worst enemy, as a matter of fact. Even if it was cold out here, it would not be as big a problem as the wind. The wind not only messes with your fire and your ability to get cold, it cools your pan uh, real fast. So... That's not very hot. So anyway, that's what we're doing. So when you make the biscuits, do you grease it with anything? Normally, I put like when I'm doing home, you know, usually my biscuits are homemade, and I did, I had to do these today because I don't live here and I wasn't bringing all the paraphernalia. You know, so we bought canned biscuits, but uh, that I would do some Crisco in it, and that's what I would do. But uh, generally speaking, what we did this today was to put a little bit of oil on a, a paper towel and just rub down the inside and then put the biscuits in there. So, do you put, do you put the coals on You put coals, you put coals on the bottom, but not as many as you're going to put on the top. Okay. And these Dutch ovens, I don't know if you know, have legs. Yes, and they have legs so that they, you're not putting it right on top of the, the fire. And, the, um, and then you'll notice the lids are different because they have the lip, they're more flat and they have a lip and that's to keep the coals on the top. So you put a little bit of heat on the bottom, you put a lot of heat on the top because it's further away from what it is, especially if you're baking something. And so that's what you're going to do. And, um, and then, then every, every so often, rotate them so they can see that. Every so often you're going to rotate the lid in case You've got a coal over here that's real hot, hotter than everybody else, and you don't want it to stay in one place the whole time because then it'll burn what's under it. So you rotate it every little while, and that way you don't get into trouble with, you know, burning one spot. Yeah, especially when you're cooking biscuits or cornbread or something like that. Where do you get your handle? Uh, you can order them from Lehman's. Do you know what Lehman's is? You can order them from Lehman's. Some old hardware stores have them. Uh, if you have a really good old feed and seed hardware store in your town, uh, th they might have them. And if they don't, they might order you. Now, uh, some of them are, this is your good one, right? The other one had not, it was not, it was straight, is that it? It wasn't curved. You want one that's curved. 
okay, like that. The other one that he had was horrible. Well, we still have it, but we don't use it. We don't use it because you want one that's curved to hold on to the lid. You, want, you don't want to pick the lid up and it slip. You know. Uh, so that's, you know, you have to be watchful about that. But other than that, they're about $15, $20. But they last forever. I mean, they're. But we enjoy cooking like this. And you can get, you know, grates and use your, uh, use your skillet thing. We've got a skillet this big, you know. You can cook for your whole family in that one giant skillet, some big stir fry. If you raise your vegetables, potatoes and, and broccoli and carrots and whatever, and put them all in that big skillet. And, and have you a humdinger of a stir fry. Where do you find pots like this? Well, can actually, yes, Walmart actually sells a uh, lodge. Now, and, Walmart at home right here. Well, I assume Walmart here does. I, I, I imagine it does. <laughs> but uh, it, some old-fashioned hardware stores, if you've got an old-fashioned hardware store near you, uh, a lot of them will sell. I've never seen one like that. Yeah. Well, this is called, called a camp oven. It's a Dutch oven, but it's a camp oven. And it's because it's got the legs on the bottom and the flat top with a lip so that the coals stay on the top. Do you have sets that you keep for outside cooking and keep and sets for inside cooking? Yes, I do. Because these get so smutty. Yes, why? Well, uh, you'd have to clean it and yeah. then dry that out and do all no, that process stuff. No, it's not worth it to me. Okay. I've got skillets and things that I use that never go outside, and then I've got outside skillets that never go inside. All right, that but, makes sense. Yeah, so, you know, and I'll tell you, you can find oh, some yeah. really good pans at flea markets or yard sales where somebody, especially estate sales, and people don't know what they have and their grandma ha had a bunch of cast iron and they don't like cast iron and so they think it's junk. If you can find places like that, that's, you know, that makes it wonderful. The ones you use outside, how do you store them? Pardon? The ones that you use outside are kind of, these stay. These stay in an enclosed trailer that has a mountain of stuff in it. A lot of cast iron. It has a canvas wall tent, I don't know if you know what that is, as well as a canvas A-frame, because we do Civil War reenactments, and we also do living histories in period dress. And so we've got like anything you could want to live outside is in that trailer. So, uh, but we didn't want to bring that today, so we just brought these things. And our whole open fire out, you know, cooking outfit is much bigger than this. We've got a lot more pan. We've got a grate that we had a blacksmith make for us. We've got a tripod that we can hang, you know, stuff from. So, like the ones that have the dome lids that have a bailing, the bailing handle, you know, just uh, you hang it from the tripod over the fire. So, you know, we try to we try to do all of that and show people. Like I say, in our classes, we even do the reflector ovens and stuff like that. Because there's more ways to cook than just in this. That's good information. Thank yeah. you very much. You're welcome. That's You're welcome. Now, and we'll, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Now, I was going to say, we'll, we will start having some how-tos on our YouTube channel. Like I said, the next one's probably going to be for about how to bake bread. But, uh, but we will incorporate some of these uh, along as far as cooking on the open fire. I probably won't do my whole class all in one thing is too long uh, because we get into a lot of different things that we don't we don't have time for here but um, we will but, there, but there'll be an increments on the on YouTube you know in the next well in the next couple of months probably will be something like that once it gets too hot you know I mean I can do it any time of the year but I'll tell you it's hot <laughs> when you're yeah, when it's really hot weather, it's just, it's new. But it's, it's a neat thing to do when it's winter time. It right. is. When it's cool weather, it's a neat thing to do. Now, if we had to do it, if there was, was the only way to cook, I mean, we're going to do it. But if we if we have a choice, we'll do it in the, in, when it's not in the dead of summer in Florida. You know, that's just, you normally yeah. bury it? No. You don't, you don't bury There's it? There's no need to. Now, and you only, you, use, you only use hardwoods because they make the coal. Pine just burns up. You know, you, the whole point is you're not after a roaring fire, you're after hot coals. Now what are you calling what you're making there? Because they're black eyed peas, rice Hoppin and John. carrots. Hop and John. Hop and John. Yes. Okay. We, yeah. We've learned about it doing Civil War cooking. All right. Yeah. Wow, so that's an old, old recipe. Yeah. And sometimes uh, we're part of a uh, artillery unit. 
that does reenactments, Civil War reenactments. Okay. And sometimes we cook for the unit when we can when we can be at events. We'll cook. For the unit. Oh, you make them stale crackers? Oh, I guess that's a heart oh, attack. No, no, I don't make them eat that. I, I let them eat good food. Do you have larger pots? Than yes. Yes, we do. So when you do for a big event, you have to have yes. yes, we have one that is uh, 14, which this is a 12, and you think, well, that's 14 is not that much bigger, but when you see the pot, it's big. Right on. And the um, and then we have a skillet that's like yay big. Yeah. So yes. But, but, but does it have a lid on top of the skillet? No, the skillet doesn't have a lid. So what do you put in the skillet? Stir fries, uh, potatoes and onions, you, you home can fries, cook, you know. You can cook sausage eggs, grits, oh, no grits, but uh, you, you can cook a whole breakfast.